Welcome back. This week, our most important topic is to review the general structure of programming languages. This applies to languages in all paradigms. In fact, this applies not only to programming languages, but to languages in general. Let's see. The structure of a programming language is defined by its rules. There are three kinds of rules that define a language. Lexical rules, syntactical rules, also called the grammar, and semantical rules. So, lexical, syntax, or grammar, and semantic. Let's review each of them. Lexical rules tell us how to combine symbols, letters, numbers, and so on, to create words. And usually you separate words with white spaces, or operators, or some delimiter. This is what you do when you are reviewing a program and trying to figure out if it is lexically correct. You read character by character and you put the characters together to create words unless you identify an operator, a delimiter, a white space or the end of the line. Those, the operator, the delimiter, white spaces and end of the line are correct by itself. Also, they separate words. So when you found one of those, all the characters before them create a new word. And when you have a new word, the next step is to review if that word follows the rules that make it a literal, a keyword, or an identifier. If that is the case, that word is correct. If not, that word is considered a lexical error. Let's see an example. This is a source code in Java and have four lexical errors highlighted in red. Probably you are thinking there are more errors here, but we are talking about lexical errors. We are reviewing the lexical rules. And there are only four cases that are not following correctly lexical rules. Probably you are thinking there is an error here. There is something missing, but you are applying a syntactical rule. So yes, here there is a syntactical error, but in terms of lexical rules, this is correct. All the words there are correct. I will talk about syntactical rules later. For now, talking about the lexical rules in Java, the first error here is an error because you cannot have a number at the beginning of any word. I mean, if you have a number, the other elements after the number should be more numbers or maybe a dot for a floating point number. This 3y is not a keyword, is not an identifier, is not a number, etc. So because there are not a lexical category for this combination of symbols, this is considered incorrect. Again, following the lexical rules defined in Java. Maybe another language could have different rules and according with those rules, this could be correct. But in Java, this is incorrect. The next error is this one here. The error is because that if you start something with a quotation mark, you need to put a quotation mark at the end. In this case, we do not have a quotation mark at the end. We have an enter and that is an error. Again, according with the lexical rules of Java, maybe in another language, this could be correct. And we can continue looking for the other quotation mark in the next line, but that is not the case in Java. The next error, this one, you know that there is an error because you cannot use this symbol, the at, in Java. You cannot have the at symbol in the middle of an identifier or a keyword or anything else. Finally, here, there is an error because you can have one dot between the first two numbers, but when you have another dot, that is incorrect because this one is not an integer, is not a floating point number, is not an identifier, is not a keyword. So because you cannot classify this combination of symbols in any of the categories that we defined before, then you know that you have an error. And remember, the computer don't care about the white spaces. So the previous program is exactly the same as this one. In summary, the lexical rule define the following categories. Those categories are called tokens. So the lexical rules define what is an identifier, what is a keyword, what is an operator, what is a delimiter, what is a literal, and what is a comment in the particular language. The next set of rules are the syntactical rules. Syntactical rules define how we can combine words to create sentences that are correct in the particular language. The syntactical rules of a language can be represented using BNF notation 
or syntax diagrams. We're not going to review that in detail, but I'm going to show you some examples so you can have an idea of how that is done. This is a subset of the Java grammar. For each rule, you can saw the BNF notation and the diagram. BNF notation and diagrams are equivalent. I'm going to use the diagrams to explain the following example just because the diagrams are easy to follow. In the diagram, and you can notice, there are two elements, ovals and boxes. The ovals represent lexical elements, tokens. For instance, class, extend, comma, open curly bracket, closing curly bracket. The boxes represent rules. For instance, there is a rule modifier and a rule field declaration. The first rule defines that the Java program should start with the keyword class, but also tell us that we could have a modifier. It is optional. Then, in order to know what is a modifier, we need to review the rule modifier. As you see, the rule modifier is just ovals. And basically, this is a list of all the words that you can put before the keyword class. The rules tell you that you can start a program in Java with the word class, but it's also correct if you put the keyword public before class because public is a modifier. However, if you make a mistake and put here something different like this, that is going to be an error because this word is not listed as a valid modifier. If you continue with the rule after the keyword class, the first rule tells you that you need to put an identifier. Something like this will be correct, but this will be incorrect. After the identifier, you can use the keyword extend, but it's optional. So if you put extend, it's good. But if you do not put extend, it's also fine. However, if you decide to put extend, you need to put after that a class name. You can also continue and put here the keyword implement, which is also optional. But if you put implement, then you need to put the name of an interface and you can have several interface names, but you need to separate them with the comma. It's mandatory to put the open curly bracket. That is not optional. If you review here, the open curly bracket do not have any other path. So you cannot avoid to put the open curly bracket and so on. You can continue the rule. The last thing is a closing curly bracket. The closing curly bracket is mandatory also. Now, between the open and closing curly bracket, if you have nothing, according with the rule, that is correct. Syntactical rules help us to identify syntactical errors. For instance, in the first line, the missing semicolon. In the second line, that the identifier high cannot be between two expressions. An operator could be correct there, but not the identifier. The same case is with the equal operator. The, e the equal needs as a third element an ID, not another expression. So an equal between two expressions is incorrect. Similarly, after the parentheses of the if statement, you need an expression or an open curly bracket, but not a closing curly bracket. The last set of rules are the semantic rules. Semantic rules will review if sentences that are syntactically correct does have a meaning in the language. These are examples of semantic rules. Semantic rules will review, for instance, that you declare a variable only one time. You cannot have two variables with the same name in the same function. So according with this rule, the code shown here have two semantical errors. Semantic rule will review that the type match between variables and values. And these are three semantic errors according with this rule. Semantic rule are also going to review that the index of an array are integer numbers, or that the condition in an if statement or loop statement are Boolean values, that a function have a return type, and that the return type match with the type of the function, and also that the function is called with the same number of parameters that it was declared. Lexical, syntactical, and semantical rules define the structure of a programming language. Programming languages that belong to the same paradigm have similar rules. Our work here is to compare between the different paradigms the lexical, syntactical, and semantic elements. That is going to be our goal the next weeks. Have a nice day.